Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode from Network From Home. In this episode today, we're going to be talking about your modem and how your modem affects the speed of your network. We're going to look at a few examples. We're going to look at a case where your modem can improve or increase the speed of your network. And we'll also look at cases where your modem can actually restrict the speed of your network. What you'll find is your modem is an integral piece of your home network and you want to make sure you have the right one in place in order to get the most out of your internet plan. With that, let's dive into a few examples here. I have an analogy for you as well as some examples that we'll run through. Let's dive into it. Okay, so we're talking about how a modem affects the speed of your network. I love to use this water analogy, and I hope this helps you better understand what exactly we're talking about here and how the speed of your network is affected by the devices in it. Okay, so let's say we have a water source here. This water source delivers a ton of water flowing really quickly through these pipes that you see here. And let's say that water source comes out at 100 gallons per minute, as you can see here. So into this pipe, water is flowing at 100 gallons per minute. It then reaches valve one. And let's say that valve one is halfway open, or depending if you're a glass half full or glass half empty type of person, this valve is half closed. So what does this mean? This means that about 50% of the water flow can flow through that valve to the next pipe. As you can see here, this results in 50 gallons per minute. The speed of the water through this pipe here is 50 gallons per minute because this valve is half closed. Okay, let's follow this pipe down to the next valve. So we're currently flowing at 50 gallons per minute. We reach valve two, and valve two is completely open. That means the flow of water here is not restricted at all. So the 50 gallons per minute on one side of the valve, we see the same thing on the other side of the valve, 50 gallons per minute. And then we get to the end of the water flow. This is where our faucet is located. And because we had 50 gallons per minute here flowing through this last pipe, if this faucet is open all the way, we can get 50 gallons per minute of water flow. So let's keep this in mind when we're talking about our network devices. It's very similar in the sense that whatever's coming from your source, all of the devices in your home network, if they can support that initial flow or that initial internet speed, at the end, the end devices in your home network will experience the same internet speed as what's coming in from the source. However, if you have home network devices like this valve one here that are restricting the speed of your internet, that's going to have downstream effects. As you can see, at valve one, it's the only valve here that's closed, and it results in a 50% reduction in the flow of water from one side of the valve to the other. And that reduction is felt through valve two all the way to the faucet here at the end. So this one valve effectively is limiting the flow of water for all of the pipes and the faucet. So how does this apply to a home network? Here's example one. Let's say the internet speed from our internet service provider is 600 megabits per second. When we get to the modem, this is the equivalent of the first valve in the water example, our modem supports a bandwidth of 300 megabits per second. This is very similar to valve one in the water analogy. And what does it do? it restricts the internet speed for the entire network to 300 megabits per second. This is the maximum speed 
that your modem can support. So as a result, that's what gets passed on to the rest of your devices. Then when that internet speed of 300 megabits per, se per second gets passed to your router, even though your router can support 600 megabits per second, it results in a 300 megabits per second internet speed that's passed to the devices in your home network. So very similar to the water analogy, because this modem can't support the speed coming in from your internet service provider, it limits the speed of the rest of the network. This is a case, obviously, where a modem can actually restrict the speed of your network. Now let's look at another example. In this case, we have 600 megabits per second coming in from our internet service provider. Our modem can support 600 megabits per second. So what happens? This modem is able to pass the entire internet speed coming from our ISP over to our router, which is 600 megabits per second. Our router can support 600 megabits per second, so it takes that internet speed, 600 megabits per second, and passes it to all the devices in your home network. So this is a case where it's effectively, in the water example, both of these valves are open all the way. They aren't restricting the internet speed coming from the ISP at all. Okay, so let's go to another example here where we have a modem that supports a speed higher than what's provided by the internet service provider. So the internet service provider provides 600 megabits per second. The modem supports 1000 megabits per second. But what you'll find is 600 megabits per second gets passed on to your router. Why is that? That's because the modem cannot increase the speed provided by the source here. Essentially, your internet service provider is your source. That is the fastest possible internet speed that your network can experience. So even though this modem can support faster speeds than what's provided by the ISP, it doesn't matter. It has the same effect as the previous modem that we looked at here. As long as the modem has a supported bandwidth of at least the speed of the internet service provider, it will pass the entire speed from the internet service provider onto the router. And we can see that here. And then, let's say this router here, Oops, this should be 600 megabits per second. Sorry for the typo, let me fix that. This router can support 600 megabits per second. So the end devices in the network experience 600 megabits per second. Okay, so we've seen how a modem can restrict the speed of a home network. Now let's talk about how a modem can actually increase the speed of a home network. All right, let's say in this example, very similar to the first example we looked at. As a matter of fact, it's the same. We have 600 megabits per second coming in from the internet service provider. The modem can support 300 megabits per second. So that 300 megabits per second is passed on to your router, which is then passed to your end devices because your router can support 600 megabits per second. So how can we implement a route or implement a modem, I should say, that increases the speed of our network. Well, and knowing what we know now, if we implement a modem that can support 600 megabits per second or faster, we'll be able to effectively increase the internet speed or increase the performance of our network from 300 megabits per second at our end devices to 600 megabits per second. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make our upgrade internet service provider providing 600 megabits per second. Our new modem can support 600 megabits per second. That's passed on to our router, which can also support that internet speed of 600 megabits per second. And that gets passed on to our end devices. So essentially, you're going from 300 megabits per second here previously to 600 megabits per second when you upgrade your modem. 
And this is a real important example here. If you currently have a modem that's restricting the speed of your internet on your network, if you upgrade it, you have the opportunity to increase the performance of your network. So hopefully these examples help you out here and help you understand how a modem can impact your home network. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now you should have a good idea of when your modem can restrict your network performance as well as when your modem can improve your network performance. I'll link to a bunch of resources down below. I've written blog posts talking about how to determine the speed that your modem can support. I've written another post about how to determine the speed that your router can support. And then lastly, I'll also link to a blog post I've written that talks in detail about how a modem affects the speed of your network. If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. And as always, thanks for checking out Network From Home. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks a lot.